A major drought is currently affecting California, and it is unclear when it will cease. California may have seen the driest three years on record, but the state is also currently experiencing significant flooding. While over 100,000 residents are without power, millions of residents are still surveying the damage. Little of it makes sense. How is it possible for there to be both droughts and floods in one area at the same time? Stay tuned as we uncover the factors that contributed to this substantial investment and explore why it is crucial for California's water management and the protection of its communities. California is getting closer to creating a massive new reservoir within a huge, natural Calusa County Valley that's shaped like an elongated oval bowl. When completed, the long-proposed $4 billion sites reservoir will hold enough water to feed the needs of 5 million homes a year or a half million acres of farmland. That's enough water to cover every square inch of San Francisco 50 feet deep. Currently, there's a big gap between the supply of water in California and the demand for it. But if you close off a 300 feet wide gap and another one just like it, you could easily create one of the largest reservoirs in all of California. In fact, it would be the seventh largest mega reservoir. California, a state that's battling severe drought and catastrophic floods. What's even more intriguing is their planned solution. A massive dam that's been on the table since the 1950s, but only now is being actualized. A massive project estimated to cost around $4 billion. California, the Golden State, home to Hollywood, Silicon Valley, stunning beaches, and expansive desert landscapes. Yet behind the picturesque beauty lies a sobering reality. California is enduring a major drought. In October 2021, the governor declared a statewide drought emergency, urging Californians to reduce their water consumption by 15%, would increase Northern California's reservoir water storage capacity by 15%, with the water to be shared between state's biggest water goals. Those benefits would stretch from the Northern Central Valley and the Bay Area all the way to Southern California. Sites would get its water from the Sacramento River, but water would only be taken in the rainy season and only when the water flow is very high. When much of that overflow ends up going out to sea, it teleports water that comes to us naturally in the water periods to the drier times when we need it more. The water would be sent through 180 miles of canals westward to the sites project near Maxwell. All but 12 miles of that already exist, saving enormous costs with our changing climate, with our drought conditions and extended drought period. A couple hundred years ago, when the first Americans entered the area, there was so little water. The farming, the land was difficult. Nowadays, not much has changed. The governor of California proclaimed a drought emergency for the whole state on October 2021. In effort to get things back on track, he urged the populace to use 15% less water. But the emergency is still in place in 2023, so eight months later, California has been officially in a drought for more than a thousand days, but this only tells a portion of the tail smack dab in the heart of this protracted drought. Parts of California saw significant flooding during a period of exceptionally strong rainfall. Cities and towns suffered damage. The governor proclaimed another state of emergency after 22 people were slain. The state is currently experiencing both emergency droughts and emergency floods at the same time. But how is it possible for California to be in two different states of emergency at once? Management of water is the answer. In times of intense rain, a significant amount of water falls to the ground, flooding the area. However, only a small portion is correctly gathered and stored. Most of the water either drains away or pours out to sea. By the time the sun shines again, it is as if the rain never fell and the drought just continues. That is the predicament. California's is in. They're unable to save enough water during the rainy season to make up for the dry spells. They swing back and forth instead from floods to drought in a never-ending cycle. The crucial query is whether California is capable of taking action. They tried in the 1950s. The state water project was launched when the state made the decision that enough was enough. The water project straightforward. The objective was to find a mechanism to store water during floods so that it could be recycled during dry spells. That's the situation California finds itself in it. They can't collect enough water during the rainy months to make up for the periods of drought. Instead, they seesaw back and forth. Too much water then too little. Too much then too little again and again and again. The big question is, can they do anything about it? Well, they've certainly tried. In the 1950s, the state went through a similar period to the one happening now with droughts and floods taking place in quick succession. The state decided enough was enough and established the state water project. 
This project, often known as the SWP, had a simple goal, find a way to store water during periods of flooding. So, that it could be recycled during periods of drought in the first few years, they built more than 20 dams, which allowed them to collect water in giant reservoirs during periods of heavy rainfall. The most famous is probably Lake Oroville, the reservoir behind the Oroville Dam. The dam itself is the largest one in the whole of America, standing at a height of more than 200 meters, while the reservoir holds hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. Another famous example is Pyramid Lake, which sits just outside Los Angeles. Pyramid Lake, a well-known illustration, is located not far from Los Angeles. When there is a drought, these enormous reservoirs can store water that may be delivered to cities and farmers. It is a remarkable feat of engineering that makes use of a vast system of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some of the water flows across mountain ranges for hundreds of kilometers. The California Aqueduct, which runs from the Sierra Nevada all the way to Los Angeles and branches out to provide water to millions of people along the way, is the most well-known part. The Edmondson pumping plant eventually needs to lift this water 600 meters over the turbulent mountain. Similar to attempting to pump a river over one World Trade Center, the Edmond pumping station is the highest lifting pumping station in the world. Its water management system is among the most sophisticated and comprehensive in the entire world. However, it was only intended to be stage one while it was being built in the 1960s and 1970s. In the 1980s and 1990s, there were plans to construct additional dams and canals, but for a variety of reasons, those projects were shown. The key factor was economics. In addition to its mounting debt, California was also dealing with other problems like environmental challenges. California decided to put off new construction in anticipation that the project's initial stage would be enough on its own. During periods of drought, the water collected in these giant reservoirs can be sent to farms and cities. It's an impressive process, which relies on a massive network of canals, aqueducts, and pumping stations. Some of the water travels hundreds of kilometers and even crosses mountain ranges. The most famous component is the California Aqueduct, which carries water all the way from the Sierra Nevada to Los Angeles, branching off to serve millions of people along the way. At one point, the Edmondson pumping plant has to lift this water over the Teachapi Mountain's height of 600 meters. It's like trying to pump a river over the top of the One World Trade Center. No other pumping plant in the entire world lifts water higher than the Edmondson. Our water demands have grown much beyond what the system was intended to handle. According to Mike Waite, executive director of the California Farm Water Coalition, the water management system needs to be upgraded urgently because of the growing population. A short distance north of Sacramento lies in narrow valleys surrounded by hills and rocks on both sides, with broad expanses of yellowish grass and clusters of plants and trees. The landscape is arid and scrubby, so how will it be constructed to fill in any gaps between the hills at the valley's edge? Workers will first construct a number of dams. The two largest dams located on the eastern and northern sides of the valley respectively will be the site's dam and the Golden Gate Dam. People come first. But conserving other species has to be a goal as well. There's still a chance this project won't ever be built. They haven't quite raised enough funding, but as things stand, it looks as though the reservoir will be up and running by 2030. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of California's new dam and its significant cost. We hope this video has shed light on the reasons behind the $4 billion investment and emphasized the importance of water security and disaster preparedness for the state. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below with your thoughts on this topic. Until next time, take care.